But recent research suggests that taking minoxidil orally could lead to higher concentration in hair follicles. This is achieved through a different enzyme which might enhance its effect. Minoxidil has so What's up guys and welcome back to today's informative session on a topic that well, apparently concerns many and has become somewhat of a hype again. The oral version of minoxidil. Whether you are a man or a woman dealing with male pattern or female pattern hair loss, this video will provide you with a detailed understanding of available treatment options. So minoxidil is a pretty old player in the field of hair loss treatments, but for some weird reason it has gained a lot of popularity again. So once again, in this video we will jump right into the world of hair loss treatment with oral minoxidil. But before we go into any treatment options, let's grasp the basics of patent hair loss. The condition known as androgenic alopecia involves progressive hair thinning, smaller hair strands and noticeable hair loss. These are characteristics that will vary a lot based on person to person. It's like observing a puzzle where genes, hormones and other factors contribute as people age. There are many different versions of hair loss and while stuff like finasteride or pyrolutamide might work to stop androgenic alopecia, they don't have such versatility as minoxidil has. Over time, hair loss treatment has seen remarkable advancement. Just from traditional methods to cutting edge innovations, the range of options has expanded significantly, especially the last decade. And today we have a bunch of different things we can use. We can use stuff like RU58841, low laser therapy, some guys use PRP or even pyrolutamide, but none of them works just as minoxidil does. Originally designed for hypertension, minoxidil has found its place in hair restoration also. Think of it as a dual purpose solution, not only beneficial for the heart, but also promoting hair growth. To understand minoxidil's action, I thought it of interest to take a few moments to go over the fundamentals of how this drug actually works. Minoxidil affects the hair growth cycle by making the resting phase, the telogen phase, shorter and the growth phase, the anagen phase, longer. This results in thicker and longer hair strands over time. The effectiveness of minoxidil relies on its conversion to an active form called minoxidil sulfate. This conversion is facilitated by an enzyme in the hair follicles. The beneficial effect of minoxidil come from its sulfated form. But recent research suggests that taking minoxidil orally could lead to higher concentration in hair follicles. This is achieved through a different enzyme which might enhance its effect. Minoxidil has several mechanisms of action. It widens blood vessels, vasodilatation it's also called, improving the delivery of nutrients and oxygen to hair follicles. It also triggers a cellular pathway called WNT slash beta cantonine, which is contributing to hair growth. Additionally, it has properties that counters the effect of androgens, the male hormones. These are usually testosterone or dihydrotestosterone that we focus on. And studies also suggest that it reduces inflammation. One way that minoxidil reduces inflammation is by decreasing microinflammation around hair follicles and also suppressing the immune system cells. This anti-inflammation in fact, is further strengthened by inhibiting the action of specific substances involved in inflammation in the scalp. Minoxidil might promote the release of growth factors that stimulate blood vessels formation and activating the beta cantonine pathway, which then goes and aids the regeneration of the hair follicles. In case of hair loss due to scarring, the use of minoxidil could be supported by its ability to counteract fibrosis. This is where you produce excess tissue formation and this is usually what contributes to creating a scar. And this is inhibited by inhibiting the collagen related enzyme in that specific area. In summary, minoxidil influences hair growth by extending the growth phase, making the hair thicker and longer, and in its active form produced through enzyme activity derives its effectiveness. 
Minoxidil has various mechanisms, including blood flow promotion, activating of cellular pathways and countering the inflammation. It also holds the potential for addressing scar-related hair loss due to anti-fibrotic properties. Administering minoxidil requires careful dosing. According to studies, female pattern hair loss doses range from 0.25 to 1.25 mg per day. It seems to work well with men, probably due to us having more body hair already at the moment, so they recommend men to have 2.5 to 5 mg dosages daily. So minoxidil goes beyond hair growth, it improves blood circulation, nourishes the hair follicles, it fights inflammation, and it's like a multitasking champion that contributes to overall hair health. But on the other hand, it does carry some side effects that would make me think twice about taking this drug. First off, oral minoxidil is not recommended for anyone in the risk of heart failure. And if you don't know what this means, then basically what it means is that minoxidil won't make your heart any better. Quite the opposite, it requires a good and healthy heart to be on the safe side to actually use this stuff. And on the other hand, the side effect I really noted personally was the hypertrichosis they found in over 50% of all the males, all the males that used 5 mg dosages. If you don't know what hypertrichosis means, it basically means this. It's Wolfman light. Hypertrichosis is when you start to grow excessive hair all over the body. And this illness might also be the father of the old school Wolfman stories we heard about as kids. So unless you're ready to move to Transylvania, I suggest you take it easy with the dosages on this compound. So there you have it guys. You ask my thoughts on oral minoxidil. And if I have to make a simple conclusion from all of this, it will be this. I like the potential extra growth of hair from oral minoxidil that it has to offer, but I really don't like the prospects of potentially either getting a stroke or turning into the French version of a Danish werewolf. I think there's a really good reason why minoxidil started as a pill, then became a topical solution, and I don't get why people use it as a pill again. But on the other hand, if you really are struggling with your hair, I would definitely consider this as one of the last resorts to get some density back. I mean, personally, the reduced inflammation is a pretty good deal, but you could also just cut out candy from your diet and cut out sugar if you would, and that would make wonders for your inflammation levels. So I don't really think that I personally would be getting on the oral minoxidil or back on topically personally or anything, but I think there's definitely a good point in why some of you guys might be interested in trying out this compound to get some extra density from this versatile drug. And guys, you know the drill. If you like this kind of comment and want to see more, please hit the notification bell, subscribe and like this video, and you know, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>